Welcome to this video in which I will explain how to stamp a virtual flower field. This is a great starter project because it doesn't require prior knowledge regarding programming. However, you should be familiar with the concept of angles. We start the project by drawing a petal for our flower. Sprites don't have to look like the default arrowhead, but sprites can also wear so-called costumes. These costumes can be created in the Costumes tab by choosing the Paintbrush tool and opening the Paint Editor. The Paint Editor has different tools to draw costumes. Predefined shapes like the Rectangle or the Ellipse tool. If you press Shift or check the checkbox, you can constrain the proportions of the shapes to create proper circles or squares. If you don't like what you've drawn, you can either remove the last step by clicking Undo, or you can remove your whole drawing by clicking Clear and start over new. For our petal, we're going to choose the Freeform Drawing tool. We're going to adjust the brush size to something a little bigger, and then we're going to pick a color. In this case, I'm going with blue. Now we can draw the shape of our petal. Now we can fill this shape with the color we like and the Paint Bucket tool. Just choose a color and click inside your shape. If you want, you can also add some decoration to the petal to make it look more interesting. One more thing that is important is that you change the rotation center. By default, the rotation center of your costume is its center, so the center of the drawing. But for a petal, we need the rotation center to be at the tip. Just move the crosshairs to the tip of your petal, and if you're done and fine with your picture, click OK to wear your sprite's new costume. As you see, the new costume is a little big. For that, you can go to the Looks category and adjust its size. In the Looks category, you can find all blocks to change the looks or the appearance of your sprite. For example, you can set its size to something smaller, like 40%. Just click the block once and see how its size changes. Here you can also find blocks that can apply graphic effects on your costume, which you're going to get to know later. As a next step, you want to stamp your costume on the stage. Go to the pen category to find blocks with which your sprite can leave a trace on the stage. In this case, we want to stamp the sprite's costume on the stage with the stamp block. Click the stamp block multiple times and move your sprite in between to understand what the block is doing. When using the pen category, you mostly want to clear your stage at some point because you don't like what you've drawn. For that, you can drag out a clear block and create a helper script that's going to clear the stage and then it's going to move the sprite back to the center of the stage by using the go to x0, y0 block from the motion category. For your petals, it's important that they turn between the stamping, so they get a different direction each time. The motion category is the home of all blocks that have to do with the movement of a sprite on the stage. Drag out a turn block from the motion category and put it right under your stamp block to create a stamp and turn script. Clear the stage to see what happens. If you click the block multiple times, your sprite is turning and stamping itself each time to create a whole flower. As you don't want to click the script multiple times, but want to create a flower automatically, you need to include a loop. The repeat loop repeats the blocks inside its C-shaped slot as many times as indicated in the input above. In this case, 10 times. The flower that you've just stamped has way more petals than 10. So how can you find out how many repeats you need to get a whole flower? Just click on the script and count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 
8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. So in this case, you need to repeat 24 times to get a full flower. Include your script into the C-shaped loop and test it. Seems to work. Great. What about if I don't want to have 24 petals in my flower, but only two? What would I need to change in my script? How often would I need to repeat? And what angle would I need to turn? As I'm only having two petals, I would need to repeat my script twice. And as both petals are just at the opposite of each other, I would need to turn 180 degrees. What about a flower with four petals? As we're repeating the double amount of times, four times, we can only turn 90 degrees. Or we only have to turn half the number of degrees that we did before. Looks great. Just to make sure, let's try the same thing with a flower that had eight, has eight petals. We're repeating eight times and then we're turning only half the number of degrees of from before, so 45 this, in this case. So 45 degrees repeated eight times will give, give us an eight-petaled flower. Maybe we can come up with a rule how we can find out what angle we need to turn. 2 times 180 gives us a 2 petal flower, 4 times 90 gives us a 4 petal flower, and 8 times 45 gives us a 8 petal flower. 2 times 180 and 4 times 90 and 8 times 45 all give 360. So the full turtle turn divided by the number of petals that our flower has. We can use an operator to try it out with the 8 petal flower. Just type in 360 divided by 8 degrees and try if we get the exact same flower. Yay! That worked! So now we can build flowers with any number of petals we like. That's a great start for our new flower field. Now we want to make a flower field that has multiple flowers at random positions with an individual color and size as well as individual number of petals. For that, we are starting with a variable for the size of our flower. Variables are a construct that can store values and their reporters can be used as reference for that value. The stored values can be numbers or text, but also lists and even blocks. Script variables are a type of variable that is only valid inside the script that they are attached to. You can rename them by clicking on them and giving them a reasonable name that describes what they are supposed to do. Then you can set the variable to a random number between 15 and let's say 30%. So your new size can only be between 15 and 30%. The next thing you have to do is that you need to use your new variable that you just made that stores the random value to the real size of your costume by using the set size block. Then you can stamp a flower with the size that you just randomly picked. Let's try it out. You see that you now got a smaller size, a bigger size, then smaller again, so your flowers all have individual sizes between 15 and 30 percent. What is not so cool is that they are all at the same position. So in a flower field, not all flowers grow at the same spot. Use the go to random position block, which chooses random positions on the stage and pick that from the motion category and add it to your script. Try it again. Now you should get differently sized flower at random positions on the stage. That already looks pretty great. Let's see what else we can do. Right now, all your flowers have the exact same number of petals, 8. How about we create a second variable by clicking on the black arrowhead on the script variables block and choose that to set the petal number of our flowers. Rename it again, for example, number of petals, and then set the number of petals also to a random number. 
go to variables to choose the set block, drag the pick random number block from the operators category and then choose something like 4 to 8 petals. What you also have to do is that you need to use the reporter number of petals as an input for the repeat block and also for the operator where you calculate the angle that you have to turn for each flower. As you can see, now you can get flowers with, for example, in this case, seven petals, but also six or five. Click your script multiple times to try it out. This is actually not how flowers work, so flowers of the same species always have the same number of petals, but for art's sake, we're going to ignore that. Another thing that might be interesting is that on a flower field, not all flowers have the exact same color. Go to Looks and pick a graphic effects block to set the color effect for each flower. The color effects block changes the color of a costume based on the input. So on a flower field, the color of a flower also depends on its nutrition, for example. So what we can do now is that we can randomly pick a color effect that slightly differs from the original color of our sprite costume. Include that to your script and run it. You now see that your flowers all have a slightly different shade of blue. One more thing that you could include to your flower field is a second species. On a flower field there's mostly not only one species but multiple ones. You can just create a second costume for your, for your sprite that represents another species. Pick another color, draw a different shape, again adjust the brush size and fill the flower with something that you like. Then again add some more decoration to the petal if you want and don't forget to adjust the rotation center to the tip of your petal. If you like it, click OK to create a second costume for your sprite. You can now go to the looks category and choose the next costume block. What this block does is that it switches between all the costumes that your sprite has except the original turtle sprite. Include that at the end of your script to switch to a new costume after you've drawn a flower. Try that. What you can see now is that your flower field has two different flower species and the flowers have different angle, a different number of petals and slightly different colors and they are at a random position. As last step, you want the flowers of your flower field grow themselves. For that, drag out a repeat loop and input the number of flowers that you want to have on your flower field. Watch your flowers grow and have fun rebuilding the project. See you soon.